Hatred Pharma welcomes you to the ocean of practical knowledge about small animal practice. That is Hatred's YouTube channel. Dr. Chandrasekhar Sir is a renowned clinician having a clinical experience of more than 20 years in small animal practice. He has pursued a postgraduate degree and a doctorate in veterinary clinical medicine. Currently serving as a professor in the Department of Veterinary Clinical Medicine at MVC Chennai, he specializes in veterinary medical oncology and small animal internal medicine. Hatfield family extends a heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Chandrasekhar Sir for sharing insightful content with our fellow veterinarians. Thank you, sir. Dear participants, the topic uh, which I am going to discuss about uh, hypotension in small animal practice. It is an emergency. So certain parameters you have to address whenever you get a cases of uh, hypertension. Normally you will get it in case of uh, trauma. There you will have a hemorrhage that is a hypotensive shock. There are occasions animal develop uh, sepsis that they, they call it a septic shock. There are occasions animal develop uh, allergy they call it an anaphylactic shock. There are various classifications of about the shock, but the hypotensive shock, hypotensive shock, it has to be addressed on time with the fluid or blood or some anti-allergic drug, or um, there are drugs to improve the cardiac contractions, there are drugs to improve the vascular uh, tone. So all these drugs, uh, you know, timely use is playing an important role. Another important aspect uh, of uh, hypertension, uh, when you look at the capillary, uh, examine the mucous membrane, you can see the pale mucous membrane. When you pr press the buccal mucosa, that is when you perform a capillary time, it will also get prolonged. These are all the, some of the key points. And the certain hematologic changes, certain biochemical changes, there are certain, um, you know, arrhythmias and uh, there are, uh, there are uh, blood gas changes. All those things we'll see one by one. Hypotension is reduction of systemic arterial uh, blood pressure, which results from disruption of normal cardiovascular homeostasis. Systolic arterial pressure of less than 90 mmHg or mean arterial pressure less than 60 mm Hg comes under the hypotension category. Renal artery regulation can normally maintain glomerular filtration pressure with the systolic BP between 80 mm Hg and 200 mm Hg. Therefore, a systolic BP lower than 80 mm Hg require urgent intervention to prevent acute kidney injury. So when there is a hypotension, the less perfusion to the kidney the raw system also getting activated. You all know that renin getting produced and then it gets converted to angiotensin 1 and it, again it converted to angiotensin 2. The angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstriction. The potent vasoconstriction results in hypertension. This hypertension results in the multiple organ damage, blindness, renal failure, hepatic failure, multi-organ failure, so on. So, to prevent hypotension, timely administration of the fluid, timely administration of the blood to reverse the mortality and morbidity in a critical care setup. So, to identify the hypotension, you need to uh, the physician or the critical care uh, specialist. He must be good at uh, you know do uh, analyzing or using the Doppler BP on tag. And then mean value uh, you have to take for interpretations. So in the subsequent slides, we'll tell you what are the points you need to follow and all those things. Causes of hypertension, decreased preload can be caused by hypovolemia, 
it can be due to hemorrhage hemorrhage we all know that due to it can be an accident it can be a blood vessel rupture due to you know uh, vasculitis caused by uh, organism trauma naturally automobile accidents or high rise syndrome gastrointestinal losses it can be due to vomiting and diarrhea polyuria we all know that the excessive urination hypo or you know cortisism efficient or that spacing of fluid condition of fluid burns heat stroke due to heat <clears throat> then decreased venous return due to pericardial tamponade if the excess amount of fluid accumulation around the pericardium that can result in decreased venous return restrict to pericarditis is an another uh, clinical condition excessive pneumothorax or severe pneumothorax or more amount of accumulation of gas into the thoracic cavity wherein if you take x-ray lifting of the cardiac chamber you can appreciate <laughs> positive pressure ventilations gastric dilatation and valvulus endoscopy heartworm disease otherwise they call it as cavell syndrome decrease cardiac function due to cardiomyopathy valvular disease mitral valve or rectus valve disease bradi arrhythmia reduce the heart rate uh, with arrhythmias tachy arrhythmia increase heart rate with arrhythmias electrolyte abnormalities mainly uh, uh, potassium excess or potassium uh, low level calcium excess calcium low one acid base disturbances severe hypoxia or reduced amount of oxygen sepsis or systemic inflammatory responsive syndrome decreased vascular tone you can get it in case of sepsis or uh, systemic inflammatory responsive syndrome anaphylaxis due to allergic urogenic shock is also due to allergy drug induced cases anesthetic agents vasodilator beta blocker calcium channel blocker electrolyte abnormality acid base disturbance severe hypoxia all these uh, various physiological factors which cause hypoxia which cause hypotension in uh, critical care setup which result in multiple organ failures here you can see on the ultrasound pictures uh, these call it as a fast a fast means don't think this uh, we are doing the scan very fast it is actually a focused assessment sonography for trauma for abdominal organs so a means abdomen fast means focused assessment sonography for trauma so here you can appreciate the urinary bladder below that there is a anatomic structure this is the this uh, particular area they call it cystocolic cyst means a bladder colic means colon between the urinary bladder and the colon if you have an accumulation of fluid or uh, accumulation of blood uh, you know which will help in identifying the presence of fluid in a accident cases similarly you can also identify the presence of fluid between the hepatorenal in between the liver and right kidney similarly you can also identify a fluid in the hepatic diaphragm between the liver and diaphragm you can also identify the presence of fluid between the uh, splenorenal between the spleen and the kidney regions so these are all the spaces these are all the areas first i told cystocolic hepatorenal hepatic diaphragm and fourth is splenorenal so all these four places having a dead space in the abdominal cavity whenever animal met with an accident you will uh, you know uh, there are occasion you will get the accumulation of blood in the abdominal cavity the severity you can grading depends upon the accumulation of fluid in the the point where i told if it is a one place mild it is two place moderate three place severe and then uh, you know depends upon the accumulation of fluid the area which i told you know which will able to uh, identify the 
severity or the accumulation of blood or fluid in the abdominal cavity similarly in thoracic cavity also there are uh, places wherein you will find uh, uh, accumulation of blood uh, this technique they call it as t fos focused assessment sonograph trauma uh, for thoracic organ what they, they do no they use a linear probe or the applying the gel uh, keep the probe on the dorsal aspect of the thoracic cavity the accumulation of blood in any accident cases when you want to know when there is accumulation of blood in the thoracic cavity you can use this t fast technique you have to use the dorsal part of the thoracic cavity then uh, you can also keep the probe on the you know uh, wherein the chest tube will normally be used you know uh, that particular site uh, maybe a uh, 12th or 13th rib and another area where you have to focus the pericardial site maybe third to fifth intercostal space you need to go like zigzag way start from dorsal aspect of the thoracic cavity then coming uh, cardal then again coming to the mid abdomen mid thoracic cavity then coming cardally so entire thoracic cavity you need to screen so that you can identify the presence of fluid in the thoracic cavity especially in the pleural area and uh, the pleural area normally pleural will be hyperplastic uh, cases which are having a pleural effusion Uh, you can see the movement of the pleura uh, in the thoracic region similarly uh, pericardial effusions uh, you know between the pericardium and the myocardium normally you won't get much of fluid and in case of accident cases you will have the oozing of fluid from the uh, pericardial region you can uh, see the presence of uh, blood between the myocardium and the pericardium you can see like you know ball floating in the water like that you know between the pericardium and the myocardium heart contraction relaxation you can appreciate and this accumulation of fluid results in the pericardial they call it as pericardial tamponade this fluid also result in decreased venous return and the decreased venous return it result in a less amount of uh, 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 you know, pure blood circulation into the vital organs like renal hepatic gastrointestinal region and that uh, less amount of blood circulation result in uh, you know um hypoperfusion result in multiple organ failure we will tell you one by one this is about the a fast and t fast these are all the area which i told uh, already thoracic fast that means focused assessment sonography for trauma for thoracic cavity t fast means don't think that the thoracic cavity you have to do fast scan not like that and uh, these are all the area you can see we use the linear probe on the dorsal aspect of the thoracic cavity we kept the probe normally the uh, aerated lung will be hyperopic when you go on ultrasound and uh, i told you, you know we need to go for a zigzag way you need to uh, you know uh, scan from the dorsal aspect and then uh, thoracic chest tube uh, insertion site then come to middle area then uh, come to uh, pericardial region so so here you can identify the pleural the uh, pleural line will be hyperopic if there is accumulation of fluid you can see the anechoic area normally you will not find any fluid in the thoracic cavity so accident cases when you want to know when there is accumulation of blood in the thoracic cavity you can use this t fast technique you can identify the presence of blood in the thoracic cavity similarly pericardial effusion due to blood and uh, you know this particular region uh, between the pericardium and myocardium not much of fluid so there are small quantity of fluid will be there normally for lubrications in case of animal affected with the uh, you know uh, accident and you will find uh, some quantity of fluid between the pericardium and the myocardium and i already i told you know uh, there is a water containing bag if you put a balloon the balloon float similar appearance you can do a thoracic uh, ultrasound you can able to appreciate uh, between the pericardium and the myocardium the presence of uh, blood or the fluid you can appreciate already i told you the detailed information about the uh, a fast a fast nothing but don't think that the excessive uh, uh, with the speedy manner doing an ultrasound it is a abdominal scan focused assessment sonographic for trauma trauma cases they classified some of the anatomical locations one is hepatic diaphragm another one is spleno-urinal third is cystopolic fourth one is hepatorenal 
these areas having some dead space as soon as the animal met with an accident and you know you can see the accumulation of blood in this area if it is one particular area mild this is a moderate and severe and, and so on depends if you find more uh, the, all these four area anechoic area we will do an ultrasound then more amount of uh, blood accumulation uh, you know uh, 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 you know present in the particular case that is the meaning of it so those who are having ultrasound better keep the probe accident cases keep this uh, anatomical site is an important site for screening whenever you find a scanty fluid or mild fluid moderate fluid, record on the your observation sheet and then go out with your procedure probably if the platelet count the pt apt value on the clotting profile and within the normal limit do with the ultrasound guidance introduce the needle aspirate the material so that you know um, uh, you, you can give the comfort to the animal similarly here also already i given a uh, uh, you know, uh, previous class how to how to do a pericardiosynthesis here also whenever there is accumulation of fluid Uh, after the accident you know you need to remove and the, with the ultrasound guidance uh, probe uh, with the use of linear probe introduce the needle and remove the fluid normally 7 to 8 intercostal space ventral aspect of the area normally preparing for removing the fluid in case of pneumothorax you will have to prepare a dorsal aspect of the thoracic cavity so pneumothorax when you want to remove the gas you have to prepare the dorsal aspect of the thoracic cavity is a clinical important point when there is a accumulation of fluid in the thoracic cavity you have to uh, you know approach the ventral aspect of the thoracic cavity and uh, if uh, you are if you are removing the gas in the pneumothorax you want to know whether you are uh, able to remove the gas from the thoracic cavity this uh, insertion needle you have to connect it with the three way tap the exit point you have to immerse it in the water so once you uh, take out and then you know release it in the water you can see the air the presence of the air bubble coming out so that you know you are effectively removing the gas from the thoracic cavity that's the way you can uh, keep the instrument uh, ready and then you can go to the procedure another thing after removing the gas from thoracic cavity take an x ray you can uh, appreciate the you know uh, removal of the gas changes in the lung region normally pneumothorax uh the heart base it gets shifted from the sternal region normally it will have uh, some contact with the sternal region animal with the pneumothorax the excess amount of accumulation of gas it gets shifted to the dorsal aspect so after the removal the uh, heart you know it will come and touches the sternal border so that's the way you have to confirm similarly pericardial effusion you have to approach only on the right side you must have the ecg machine you must have the echo machines ஒன்சம் or visit www.hatwit.com thank you for that the pg apg platelet uh, should be within the normal all the clotting profiles should be within the normal limit then with the ultrasound guidance introduce the needle for between 5 to 6 intercostal space remove the fluid normally you know the pericardial fluid uh, it won't clot if you are rupturing the any blood vessels it will get clot another thing if you have a ecg if you are uh, touching the Uh, pericardium you will see the arrhythmia changes on the ecg strip so that's the way the ecg playing an important role and the, by using the echocardiography machines you are exactly identify where exactly your needle is going and touching the uh, organ can be identify easily and then you know accordingly you can plan for the uh, treatment of the procedure for the particular animals so this is a message about this slide so these four sites diaper the hepatic diaper of renal systolic hepatorenal these sites are very important as soon as the animal met with an accident you better uh, screen stabilize the patient with oxygen uh, with the uh, et tube or the flow by oxygen and the screen this area this area is very very important similarly uh, 
uh, you know thoracic accent or any accent cases so better to screen uh, do a t fast better to do a a fast so that uh, the accumulation of uh, blood or the fluid you can uh, appreciate very easily and uh, similarly uh, thoracic uh, fast ultrasound you can appreciate the fluid fluid and pericard this is a message to the academician or the practitioners and already i told you uh, my presentations uh, you know you will also uh, you know um, what do you call uh, gdv also can cause uh, yeah another important point which i told you, you know gdv animal uh, giant breed dog or the you know some of the breed don't develop like uh, great dane uh, labrador uh, doberman uh, saint bernard uh, siberian husky uh, so uh, these breed we found you know they prone to develop uh, gdv excess uh, major amount of incident we observed in great dane so what happened uh, this particular breed is uh, when they consume uh, more amount of food with the excessive speed and uh, that get uh, you know normal uh, that get trapped in the stomach and then the duodenum also getting twisted around the stomach region and uh, that result in uh, dilatation and valvulus and once uh, the excessive distance of the stomach on the image you can see that cause compression on the thoracic cavity and then that result in uh, less amount of blood uh, going to the lung or the purification and then the less amount of purified blood goes uh, via aorta to the major organ like uh, kidney liver Uh, all the abdominal organs so the less amount less amount of blood supply to the liver result in hepatic failure and this in turn result in multi organ failure and uh, you know the excessive compression and also having difficulty in breathing or uh, they call this dyspnea and uh, so the message to the practitioner Okay. you have to inform the owner at any point of time that the, the animal may be prone to develop uh, acidic dilatation you need to tell them that they, they need to feed the you know uh, dog with a well balanced ration and uh, um, you know they should uh, maintain the dog uh, properly if they don't maintain with the uh, properly and these breed there are genetic exercise uh, required quantity of food administration uh, wa- required quantity of water uh, given to these animals very very important and there are occasion nowadays what they are doing no if the great dane dog uh, uh, hereditary predisposition or uh, suspecting uh, gdv there are occasions you know uh, when they do uh, spaying operation itself if it's a uh, giant breed dog they do gastropexy and then send the dog back so that you know the gdv occurrence can be uh, control so that's the way the preventive measure also they do in other developed nations and in this image you can see uh, this is the normal position of usobarius stomach 
duodenum you can see the orientations uh, and then uh, you know when they are eating more and you can see you know uh, the duodenum going uh, toward this side and the encircling the stomach and uh, you know this causes resultant gas and fluid stasis in the stomach and they expand and twist and then to the distant stomach press against the vital organ compromising blood flow this was i told you already so easy diagrammatic representations the message to the practitioners you know those who are having giant read inform the owner about this problem so that you know the well in advance they can bring it to you uh, your team also should be ready to uh, perform uh, this uh, gdv operations if it is only a gastric dilatation you can do a intubation and relieve the gas ordinary stomach tube how they use for uh, large animal similarly they say uh, you know depends upon the size of the animal the stomach tube can be selected i can introduce and relieve if it is only a gastric dilatation another important message is If the stomach is uh, distended, whether it's a dilatation or valvulus, do a gastrocentesis. Just use a 16 or 18 gauge needle. Identify the distant area, introduce the needle. Just use it so all the gas you can relieve it. Thereby, animal will be comfortable. That's the way you have to uh, do a gastrocentesis. It's an important step in the managing case of GD or GD. If it is a GD, only a dilatation. then you can uh, use a stomach tube and relieve the gas if you say gd we mean using stomach tube it will aggravate the problem that is the message to the practice you don't do a gd we case don't do a stomach tube intubation you can do gastrocentesis that's the message in the image you can see uh, the animal with uh, gdv normally the duodenum pylorus will be a ventral part in case of gdv if you get twisted the pylorus duodenum upper part uh, you know it can occupy and similarly ventrodorsal view uh, you can see the the position of the duodenum and the pylorus and the normal orientation actually this is uh, for orientation purpose we took the images uh, you can see the stomach you know within the 33 the pylorus in the ventral part of the abdominal regions so when there is a gastric dilatation progressive distance of the stomach will be there the pylorus will be there so in these cases the message to the practitioner is you can introduce the stomach tube after sedation uh, stomach release the gas suppose the pylorus is going top if you, if you have a you know a uh, uh, double bubble appearance if you have a two bubble uh, you know on the screen that means uh, gdv and those cases introduction of the stomach tube you ought to avoid then what is the remedy in a remote area do a gastrocentesis just put the needle release the gas if you release the gas you know the animal will be comfortable and uh, all the vital organ to restore the function all the vital organ they will get enough uh, blood supply you can prevent uh, uh, the animal from death you can restore the, all the multiple organ from multiple organ failure so that's the way you know uh, the gdv you have to manage and you know the message you know in case of gdv it will it will result in less amount of perfusion of purified blood to the vital organ so it result in all organ failures so this is an introducing the needle relieving gas simple procedure but an important procedure you have to do it on time don't think the simple putting needle animal will die it won't die it will the life saving procedure all critical care procedure or small procedure but is an important procedure you have to remember but you have to do it on time that is a message and also you see the orientation of the stomach in the ventral dorsal view see the mid abdomen it's occupying the how the duodenum is coming the jejunum is the mid abdominal region is occupying colon is so coming and you know going like this similarly the another view stomach where the liver is located with a uh, various uh, color marking anatomy location of the spleen and then uh, intestine bladder colon so uh, you see the colon marking with the black color kidney red color intestine uh, intestine you know wild pink uh, head of the spleen blue stomach uh, you know green color liver is red uh, bladder is uh, yellow color this anatomic location is very very important 
uh, you know, to diagnose a GD, to diagnose a GDV. So this is uh, playing an important role. Similarly, other conditions, you know, also causes uh, hypotension that uh, pneumothorax. Already I told you, you know, pneumothorax, normally the heart, you know, it little bit touches the sternal border. In case of pneumothorax, you can see the sifting of the heart from the sternum. So that, you know, these cases you have to do a thoracosynthesis. Thoracosynthesis is the only the gas accumulation you have to uh, the dorsal aspect of the lung eh, between 7th to 8th intercostal space. Maybe you normally you, uh, you know, infiltrate with the lignocin, save the area, then uh, infiltrate with the lignocin. Then we introduce the needle. The, after the needle, you know, we connect with the three-way tap. The three-way tap, it avoid the external uh, gas going inside and uh, causing uh, uh, sepsis in an animal. And so we have to maintain uh, sterile conditions. So for that, we use the three-way tap. The extension tube from here, we immerse with the uh, kidney tray with the water. So that, you know, we aspirate in the syringe from uh, three-way tap. And then we are sending the collected gas from the syringe into the kidney tray containing water. If I am sending the gas from the thoracic cavity, what will happen, you know, the kidney tray containing water, you can see the air bubble. So that, you know, you can easily uh, verify yourself that you are able to remove the gas from the thoracic cavity. After removal, there will be a, you will not be able to suck out. Then just take out the needle, take an x-ray. After taking an x-ray, the sifted the heart, you know, it will come and touches the sternal bottle. If, if you would have removed the gas uh, properly, the heart, you know, it touches the sternal area. That's the way you have to compare. So uh, this is about the pneumothorax. There are valvular disease also causes, uh, you know, hypertension. And uh, what will happen, you know, the, you can see the, the left atrium here in the left ventricle, here in the right atrium, right ventricle. So when there is a left atrial enlargement and uh, that will also result in cough. So all the valvular the diseases you will have the left atrial enlargement, the animal will have a cough. And uh, those, those cases you have to uh, do an echo and identify the causes and that treat accordingly. Similarly, this is a, that is a uh, lateral view. Uh, this is the ventrodorsal view. And uh, this, is the, this is the left ventricle area. This is the left atrium area. And you can see the you know, uh, enlargement on the side. When you do an, uh, there are occasion cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy also results in hypertension. And you know, those cases, if you do a echo, you can easily identify the distance of the ventricle, left ventricle. Then another measurement, you can also do a left atrium and iota ratio. Normally, it should be 1.6. If it is more than 1.6, there is a left atrial enlargement. This left atrial enlargement, it could have been due to the metabolic disease. It can also be due to the left ventricle enlargement. So this is another uh, important parameter you can do very easily at your uh, uh, place. And there are, uh, you know, uh, metabolic uh, uh, changes, uh, like you know, less amount of bicarbonate result in uh, metabolic acidosis. More amount of bicarbonate result in metabolic alkalosis. Similarly, uh, you know, the opposite of bicarbonate, uh, you know, uh, PCO2 excess, PCO2 low, pH low acidosis, pH excess alkalosis, and then PAO2, arterial, partial pressure of oxygen, you can identify uh, from the artery. So, if it is uh, normally, it should be uh, 85 and above, if it is less than 80. 85, uh, the animal is in hypoxic stage, it needs our uh, help to administer the oxygen on time. If there is a metabolic acidosis, you will have to give uh, the sodium bicarbonate. All those things, you know, you can identify very easily, uh, very near to the body. It's a bedside diagnostic equipment. And uh, hypertension, all these electrolyte changes, even hyperkalemia, you can make out. If it is hyperkalemia, you need to, you, you, do, you are not supposed to give a, uh, you know, potassium containing uh, fluid. You have to kind of give the potassium free fluid. So, 20% uh, dextrose, uh, insulin, uh, sodium bicarbonate, these uh, drugs has to be given to reverse the problem of hyperkalemia. And then the metabolic acidosis, we can address the sodium bicarbonate. 
uh, similarly hypoxic condition you can give the oxygen so similarly you know uh, this will be of more useful uh, in determining the critical condition similarly the hypoglycemia you can reduce the glucose so the all these condition hypoglycemia can cause convulsion hypocalcemia can cause convulsion and the uh, hypocalcemia cases even uh, you can give a 10% calcium component a 1 ml every kilo body weight iv you can give in case of uh, hypoglycemia you can give a uh, 50% dextrose 1 ml every kilo body weight iv you can give you can reverse the problem of uh, hypoglycemia and then uh, this is the picture uh, you know uh, we uh, we we uh, we took it from our place and this is uh, happened after the some uh, injection administration like uh, you know some of the antibiotic administrations and even suddenly you know a recovered case suddenly develop anaphylactic shock you can see the facial edema and uh, this is outside you are seeing similarly laryngeal edema a lung edema all uh, organ you know put into problems so the timely administration of anti allergic injections like prednisolone or adrenaline it can save the animal from the critical illness or anti histamine can save the animal from critical illness and you need to intubate administer the oxygen and then you put him on with the prednisolone or adrenaline or anti histamine to reverse the problem of allergy so giving an anti allergy is a simple procedure but it is a life saving procedure that is the critical care setup so all small small procedure you have to do it on time that is a message about the critical care uh, setup blood pressure monitoring is important part of patient assessment especially when anesthesia time uh, will be prolonged an animal has a concern in the liver and the kidney and hepatic and the cardiac problem cases blood pressure monitoring is very important hatred pharma presents its flagship brand hat cure the ultimate plasma expander to treat hypovolemic shock in small animals it consists of 6% hydroxyethyl starch 130 by 0.4 in 0.9% sodium chloride for placing order contact our sales team whatsapp at 9837253817 or visit www.hatred.com thank you blood pressure monitoring is very important blood loss is expected as part of the procedure cardiovascular stability is questionable the procedure is an emergency procedure hypotension can lead to morbidity and mortality morbidity associated with hypotension cannot be recognized by the main time may many time the morbidity associated with hypotension is quite challenging to the practicing veterinarian and uh, that has to be addressed at uh, time physiology and physics one of the most important assessment uh, a veterinarian can make is whether or not oxygen delivery is adequate unfortunately it is not possible to easily or directly assess oxygen delivery in our patient oxygen delivery can be defined as oxygen conduction blood doppler ultrasound monitoring transuretic or isovision lithium dilution methodology or thermodilution technique in general these technique are expensive technically demanding or they are invasive thus measurement of blood flow is limited in a clinical veterinary medicines in general azithromycin associated with vasodilatation and hypotension but with a minimal decrease in cardiac output dexmedetomidin is associated with the vasoconstriction decrease the heart rate and increase the blood pressure azithromycin dexmedetomidin all these drugs are commonly used in veterinary practice especially in the critical care unit or when they are going for any surgery commonly they use and when they use this drug uh, they must uh, you understand that uh, all this uh, you know the azithromycin uh, associated with the vasodilatation and hypotension dexmedetomidin associated with the vasoconstriction all these parameters uh, they must know uh, this is the azithromycin and this is the dexmedetomidin in general normal blood pressure in avac dog and cat is considered to be similar to that of seen in human being systolic blood pressure 120 mm mg diastolic blood pressure 70 mm mg 
in actually blood pressure is probably somewhat higher in our awake normal dog and cat in anesthetized animal systolic pressure considered to be inadequate if it is less than 80 to 90 mm hg mean blood pressure level lower than 60 to 70 mm hg are considered inadequate in anesthetized small animal patients so that has to be addressed on time so blood pressure measurement is an important measurement and there are indirect methods there are direct methods indirect method even the heart sound also it give you a clear you know about the animal uh, status auscultation heart sound using a stethoscope or usobesian sensor can be used to assess the blood pressure a very subjective and inaccurate method <coughs> usobesian stethoscope in small animal practice you can see in this uh, video is not playing check that so in this year you know uh, how they are uh, putting the esophageal stethoscope and uh, this finally they connected with the stethoscope which is putting around his uh, neck and uh, there is a tube they put it uh, into the mouth uh, touching the esophagus uh, they coated with the lignocaine gel after that the exit you no know, they connect with the stethoscope uh, you know instrument and then they identify the, the you know uh, the heart sounds important monitoring to heart rate heart rhythm is also very important uh, every heart rate that should be a pulse rate and uh, if the heart rate is more pulse rate low they call a pulse deficit the absence of heart sound certainly important clinical observation if you don't find the heart rate it's an emergency that has to be addressed on time and the normally p amplitude q r s t uniformly should be present on the ecg strip if you don't uh, able to see the complex uniformly on the strip then it is called as arrhythmias that also we need to uh, identify and then address the problem palpation of peripheral plus it's a cheap ec uh, non invasive it's a subjective assessment pulse pressure determined with the difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure may not necessarily reflect the mean blood pressure of the particular animal and here on the image you can see the animal uh, you know relax and keeping your one hand on the neck region another hand you are keeping on the femoral artery so you have a femoral artery and a femoral vein femoral artery you love the dominant pulsation rate and uh, the normal pulse rate you know we depends upon the various breed if the less pulse rate then uh, that has to be addressed if it is more pulse rate that also to be addressed and uh, and similarly you can also identify the pulse rate on the pedal region pedal artery region doppler ultrasonic flow detectors this is commonly used in veterinary practice and uh, this cost about indian money it cost about 1 lakh 50000 if you are buying from uh, us and other developer is cost in indian money is about uh, 70000 and uh, this is an important uh, equipment in veterinary practice and uh, you know uh, you cannot use the doppler machine which they use for human being because you need to use a veterinary doppler machine to identify or to check the pressure because there are some some software modification they have done it in the veterinary doppler this is actually a small ultrasonic probe secured over the peripheral artery and is acoustically coupled to the skin using a water soluble ultrasound gel so there is a peripheral artery imagine uh, there is a peripheral artery on the pedal region and uh, we apply some gel on the pedal region okay then only you know the sound emitted by the artery it, it get transmitted through the gel from the gel you know the sound easily picked up by the uh, doppler probe the probe produces audible sound when the blood flow is detected when the blood flow is detected the probe able to uh probe able to produce the audible sound when the flow flow blood is the blood flow is detected when inflatable cup inflatable cup is placed proximal to the probe and used to occlude flow while pressure simultaneously measured so what you have to do is inflatable cup you have to place for example i am seeing the uh bp from the pedal artery initially you have what normally i do i save the fat 
and I locate the pulsation on the pedal end with my finger. Then apply the gel. After applying the gel, no, I keep the probe. Then proximal to this, there is an inflatable cup I keep, and I will, uh, you know, I will keep on increase the pressure until it ceases the sound. Normally, we get the the BP sound with the ultrasound probe like that, like that. So that hissing sound has to be uh, stopped while uh, inflation with the pressure. Once it stops, then slowly you release. One particular time, you'll get that hissing sound again. That is the systolic blood pressure of that particular end. There are subsequent slides. We have the pictures and video. You can understand that. Now you can see. We up, uh, you know, located the blood vessel on the fetal region. We save the fur and apply the gel. The probe we kept, we kept it on the probe also. We apply the gel above the probe. We uh, there is an inflatable cup will be connected. The inflatable cup pressure, you know, we can measure with the manometers. And the, all these audible sound you can see, you can hear with the speaker. There are headphones also available. We can connect it with the headphone also. You can hear the sound probably. My opinion, better use the headphone. Some of the dogs, they don't like this sound. The cat especially, they don't like this, this type of sound. And um, some of the problem, what they can encounter is, no, if the cuff size is not uh, proper, you will not get the proper reading. And if the animal is aggressive, you will not be able to get the proper reading. Some dog, they develop hypertension due to white coat. White coat uh, in the critical care unit is the veterinarian or the doctors. And the while the, by looking at the white coat, some dogs become uh, tense. So that will also result in hypertension. See that that should not be there. And then, you know, um, uh, and then uh, connecting the equipment properly. And then, uh, uh, you know, securing the artery properly. So all these parameters is very, very important to identify the doctor duty. And then train the team also very soon. Someone has to restrain the animal. Someone has to keep the probe. And someone has to inflate the cup until uh, sees the sound. And then slowly has to release. One man doing all the parameters. Critically ill animal is okay. But the animal is uh, somewhat uh, aggressive. You need to restrain the, with the team. Then only you can do it. A cup uh, should be approximately 40% of the circumference of the limb at the site of the basement. So normally the cup should be 40% of the circumference of the limb that you have to select. There are various sizes, uh, company itself given, medium, uh, small, uh, larger uh, cup available. Normally distal tibia, forearm and the tail base have all been used at the, at the site for cup placement. Distal tibia, forearm and tail base are the used. Normally I use uh, forearm and distal tibia. The cup should be positioned at the level of the heart base. A correction of the 7mm IG should be applied for every 10 centimeter that the cuff is above or below the heart. And you know, um, uh, if the cuff is above the heart, the correction factor should be added to the absorbed reading. If the cuff is below the heart, the correction factor should be subtracted from the absorbed reading. So while using no other, this, you can easily identify the problem you can correct. The cuff is inflated under, until the flow signal is lost. This already I told. A pressure is monitored when air is slowly released from the cup manometer system. The pressure is noted when the flow is detected. Pressure is related to the systolic blood pressure. In CAD, the blood pressure me measured with this technique are usually 10 to 15 mm HG lower than the systolic blood pressure and, and may more closely approximately mean blood pressures. In general, systolic blood pressures more than 80 minutes are considered adequate in the anesthetized animals. You can see how the Doppler BP measured in the video.
My name is Anita, I'm the nurse manager at BSS Jindalee and my assistant here is Chloe, one of our lovely nurses. Marley will be our patient today and we'll be showing you how to take his blood pressure. Now key things when doing blood pressure on patients is that we make sure that we have everything ready to go because if we don't, it does get the patient quite anxious. We actually need them nice and calm at all times during the procedure. Marley has quite often, uh, has quite kindly lying here very well with us um, without having any sedation on board, which is perfect. Um, if he was a little bit anxious, what we would do is enable him to stand up, be in a sitting position, cradling him in his arms, anything to make him feel more and more comfortable. Okay, so today we've chosen um, a size two and a size three cup, and it's really important that we choose the um, precise size for the patient. If you don't have the correct size, always go higher because it will um, give a more accurate reading, so it will artificially lower the blood pressure more than artificially higher the blood pressure if your cup was too tight. So how we check to see if the cup is the correct size? Um, you want in the 40% of the width of the limb. So as you can see that this one's just a little bit small for Marley's leg and they do have indicators on the, the cuffs as well um, and that's where you would want it. Again, generally I would always measure as 40% of the width of the limb. So here we've got a level three, just make sure. And we're about 50% of the width of the limb there, so that's great. And again, if you can hold the pants for at all times, it just make them feel a little bit more secure without jolting around at all. We want to try and choose a limb that is even diameter all the way through because that enables the cuff to inflate at an even um, rate there. Now again, we want to make sure everything's working well before we go ahead and take the blood pressure. So now that we've checked the size of the cuff that's going to be on the patient, we're now going to inflate the cuff to make sure that there is no leaks within the cuff there at all. Good boy, Marley. Here we go. So we can inflate that. We've got no problems at all. We're maintaining pressure there. And what we're also doing is we're getting the patient used to that pressure being around the limb. So when we actually do come time to take the um, exact blood pressure, the patient is actually used to that going up and down. And I will do that three or four times depending on how comfortable the patient is before we go ahead and take an actual blood pressure um, reading. Okay, so Marley's nice and comfortable with that. Um, I have already pre-clipped Marley's behind the paw here. Um, so I just clip a little bit of hair off. Oh, no, sweetheart. And again, this is going to be something. And you know, there are uh, many uh, device that uh, clipper coming with a lot of sound. In the video also, you can see, you know, the animal getting disturbed. I think the manufacturer or the seller, they should come with a device without uh, noise. This noise is creating a lot of this. Some animals get up, some animals they are afraid. Uh, the, you know, you can prepare, the, select the clipper like that. So that, you know, the animal will be comfortable. But you do in the initial stages to make sure that it's nice and calm when it comes time to take the ring. Yes, we are. Okay. So here we've got some ultrasound gels, some nice lube. It is really important when it comes time to purchasing one of these. Um, the Doppler Pros are really expensive, so you really want to take good care of them. Taking good care of them means that no alcohol at all is to come anywhere close to the contact of this probe. So don't wet the limb down and then put some gel on it or anything like that. It's really important that if you want to get the, the area that you're putting the probe on clean, you're going to use water and not alcohol. It will eat away the crystal on your probe and therefore it will stop working and it's a really expensive piece of equipment to keep replacing. So we make sure that our Doppler um, We then put a little bit of um, ultrasound gel on the probe. Yeah, this is what I told you. We have to put the gel on the probe and also on the pedal artery where you are going to examine. 
so the, then only the sound picked up by this uh, doppler beep machine you can able to measure easily a nice goodly amount yeah. and then we hold marley's call yeah the and what we're going to do is we're just because it is wet and cold to the pet sometimes they can pull their limb back so you want them to be comfortable with you holding the paw to begin with here we go darling oh oh is that cold darling and then i try and cradle my hand around the limb holding that probe at all times so it's a nice secure and that's going to give us the best opportunity to get the reading um, without too much movement at all so now I turn the Doppler on. Again, no sound. And then we slowly increase our sound until we can hear something. If you do need to move the probe, it is really important to turn the sound off or down, in particular with cats, because of any sort of loud noises, they will jump. Okay, so we can hear that pulse going through there now. Again, we want to keep it as minimal as possible so we can hear it, but it's not going to actually annoy the pet. We're then going to inflate the cuff until we can't hear that sound, and then we're going to slowly decrease the pressure in the cuff until we can hear the audible sound back. If you don't believe the reading, which sometimes does come through, it's really important that we relocate everything again. We shift everything around, make sure that we've got a good sound. Also, if we have to have the volume up really high, it is important if our patient is upset about it, we then use a stethoscope. So I'm actually going to use a stethoscope in this case, just so that we can keep it a little bit quieter for Marley and show you how we can go ahead and do that. Turn the volume off first, and then I turn the actual machine off. We just um, gently sit the stethoscope over the speaker of the Doppler unit. Hatfit Pharma presents its flagship brand, Hat Cure. The ultimate plasma expander to treat hypovolemic shock in small animals. It consists of 6% hydroxyethyl starch 130 by 0.4 and 0.9% sodium chloride. For placing order, contact our sales team WhatsApp at 98372-53817 or visit www.hatwit.com. Thank you. Okay, once we've actually got the audible sound and we're happy with the blood pressure um, reading that we've actually got from the machine, we're going to take a series of at least 10 blood pressure readings. You're going to eliminate the first one, you're going to eliminate the last one, and then it's going to be an average of the other values that you've got. Once we've got that value, it's really important that smiling. Just take that off. There we go, sweetheart. When, we, when it comes time to actually record the blood pressure reading, it's really important that we write down exactly the equipment that we have used. So for young Marley, we're going to pop on his file a size three cup on the left forelimb and a blood pressure reading of 
Doppler, um, 110 millimetres of mercury. Once we've got that, we can then use that um, the equipment that we have used previously. We're going to always use that same equipment. So we can make sure that we're comparing like with like when we do take future blood pressure readings for young mothers. If you have any queries about the readings that you're getting or unsure of what you should do with abnormal readings, please do contact the Veterinary Special Services team and they'll be able to assist you. If the values are um, extremely out of range, the patient may need to come down and see us, but by calling the Veterinary Special Services team, they'll be able to assist you in the correct direction. Thanks so much, guys, and good luck. Yeah, the, some point which I observed, no? she has used the stethoscope. Uh, Sometimes earphone also available. There are the headphone available that can be used. There is a provision to attach uh, on the Doppler machines. You can, uh, you know, the animal also, it won't get disturbed with that uh, audible sound. And uh, that you can use it. Another important thing is there are a problem that she, uh, what she was not addressed, you know. Sometimes that uh, cuff, you know, cuff, uh, it should have a, you know, when you inflate, uh, that, that, that should have some elasticity to expand. And suppose using for a longer time, that loses elasticity. Even if you inflate with the cuff, you know, the more, enough amount of, uh, you know, air, it won't go inside. And see that there, there should not be any leaky from the inflatable cuff. That's very important. And then uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the probe, she told, no, the probe, you have to secure it properly and you, you need to clean and keep it safely. If, uh, if the wear and tore up the probe, no, uh, that become very costly. So imagine if you are buying here, 150,000, the probe is not working properly, you cannot use it. And this is the equipment you have to use. You cannot use the equipment what they are using for human being. Human being purpose, uh, you know, they don't have some software modification. Some software modifications available with this wet doppler. So the message to the practitioner, you have to use the wet doppler. After using the uh, equipment, you need to clean and uh, the, uh, uh, the gel and other things. Keep it safely in the container uh, or the uh, pouch uh, so that you will, uh, you will avoid all this... Uh, Damages of the equipment. This is how they are checking in the cat.
Now you can see the sound. That the sound of uh, Doppler wave emissions. Yeah, the you know the message to the practitioner with this video. Uh, see, supplying the gel, no. So all the ultrasound gel, if you use in dog, is okay. But uh, the cat, you know, the gel is a potent nephrotoxic. So after using the gel, you have to wipe it out, and you know you can clean it properly so that when the cat lick also, it won't go inside. It won't cause the renal damages. We observed a couple of cases in the past in other places. Then another other method, the automated oscillometric speed manometry. Uh, use a cuff system that detects blood pressure oscillations associated with the inflow of blood to determine systolic, diastolic, and mean blood pressure. So fairly accurate in medium to large dog. Movement, severe, severe hypotension, bradycardia, and small size may affect accuracy. A cup placement and size are the same as the Doppler methods. Advantages accurate real time measurement, access uh, for blood sampling. This is technically challenging, difficult in small patients, but the Doppler emission is convenient for small patients. MBSU and the potential for morbidity, hemorrhage, uh, expensive equipment. Dorsal, pedal, femoral, coccygeal, lingual artery. Uh, surgical approach may be used to facilitate access in small or hypotension patients. Just see how she is doing this.
இஃப் யூ கீப் தம் மியூட் மோட் நோ தே யூ வோன்ட் கெட் த அலாம் அனிமல் இது திஸ் அனிமல் ஆக்சுவலி அண்டர் செடேஷன் யூ நாட் எனி எனி ப்ராப்ளம் சம் அனிமல் யூ ஆர் யூ ஆர் ஏபிள் டு கெட் த ரீ ரீடிங் த மீன் வேல்யூ யூ ஹேவ் டு டேக் சோ இட்ஸ் டுகெதர் Similar to the Doppler uh, machine, this technique also, if the cup is not properly secured, it may not be able to sense the reading. But there they use the Doppler probe. Here, no, uh, they, they attack the cup around the uh, examining uh, site. And if the cup is not properly fit in, you will not be able to get the reading. And there, uh, the sensor or the Doppler probe, if they are not keeping it exactly on the pulsating artery, you will not be able to get the proper reading. Okay. This again, another uh, speak moment, Mr. Chair. Hey guys, David Liss, RBT here, and we are going to do a quick blood pressure on this kiddo. Um, just a quick couple minute video on how to do an oscillometric blood pressure. We're going to have to use this uh, monitor over here. So uh, when you're doing a blood pressure, really in any patient, um, they can actually be in a variety of recumbencies. They can be laying down, they can be on their side, but that type of recumbency needs to be repeated. So If I'm to take a right-sided or you know, right-side down uh, blood pressure on this patient, say in their front leg uh, or their back leg, um, right or left, whatever it is, I need to then document that and repeat it that way. So then it will really only be accurate when it's interpreted kind of apples to apples. Um, so in the dog and really in the cat, there's a couple of different places we can get blood pressures. Um, up in the front foot, um, there's the um, metacarpal artery that runs kind of between both. carpal pads here, um, and the cuff can be placed just above the, just above the carpus right about here. Um, you want to make sure that the leg is, is kind of fairly same diameter um, around. It doesn't change too much, like on this muscle area, so the cuff should fit nice right there. Um, back leg, we have the dorsal pedal artery uh, and the metal tarsal artery, and kind of both of those would be maybe more used for a Doppler, so for just an oscillometric um, Uh, machine, you can put the cuff just kind of above the hock here. And then in the uh, tail as well, we can do that many tasks, but that is a possibility. So when you're measuring, oh, it's okay. Hi. Yeah, okay. So when you're, uh, first step in doing the blood pressure is going to be to measure the cuff. And so we've got several different cuff sizes to choose from. So how do you do that? Well, we're going to be looking at basically this circumference or the, the uh, uh, kind of length around the limb that we're going to use blood pressure in. So what you do is you're going to look at the short side of your cuff, and that length, that, that width of the cuff, needs to be about 50-ish to 60-ish percent of the circumference of the limb. So you're able to see this part cuff is just about halfway. So in this gal, a four would be an appropriate size. We always want to make sure we measure that up against there. So then we're going to go ahead and put the cuff on. Um, the nice thing about these cuffs is it has a little area here where this, this arrow should fit somewhere between the end of this red line and this red line here. And it fits nicely, and it should be just gently snug. Um, if it doesn't, uh, you know, if there isn't a red line, it should basically just come around and fit just in a very, in just a kind of a nice snug way there. So the end is going to get connected to our machine, and we'll go ahead and hit start. on our machine here. We'll get that reading oh, as that pops off, which sometimes happens. Turn that off for a minute, and we'll redo this. Um, if that happens, great point. Um, you can put a little bit of tape on there. This is sometimes kind of a little bit of a point of contention. But think about it. If the tape is literally just holding the cup together, and it's not cinching down on the cup, like it doesn't go all the way around, It's not going to change that pressure. The cuff is still going to generate the pressure, and the machine will still read that. So this is perfectly fine in my book, and I've had a uh, board-certified veterinarian kind of say that he also agrees that that would be okay. So we're going to just put a little tape there to hold that in place and hit that start button. So the blood pressure cuff is going to inflate. It's 
when you then take a couple readings, and we'll get the readout on the machine here. Now, please, please, please take a couple of readings when you're doing this, especially since we have a little bit of a nervous patient. The first one or two readings are probably going to be worthless. Just throw them out, then take three or four more readings, um, and then average all of those and report the cup size, the limb, uh, the date and time of the reading. Uh, the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine actually recommends up to seven consecutive readings and then taking the average of those seven. So really, really important to take them. So treatment of hypertension, one is first is the volume therapy. Usually the first step in the treatment is the fluid therapy. And the central venous pressure monitoring is also useful in determining the volume requirement. And this is the way, you know, from the, uh, you know, the peripheral uh, blood vessels or the central line. Central venous pressure, the normally they measure from the jugular vein. And the first they introduce the needle and then uh, after the needle introduction, you know, the catheter they fix. And the, from there, you know, they connect this uh, tubing system with the jugular vein. And then this area are filled with the saline. And uh, the pressure exerted, uh, they measure. Normally, 0 to 10 centimeter H2O is the normal. Uh, less than uh, 0 is hypertension. More than 10, uh, you know, is uh, hypertension. Uh, volume overload uh, can be identified. So, hypertension patients it needs uh, fluid therapy on time. Uh, the, there are uh, non-invasive measure of uh, central nervous pressure also probes that are available. Uh, this is the, you know, invasive procedures to identify the uh, central venous pressure. Ionotropes improve the cardiac performance. And then vasopressure usually a reserved for distributed shocks, example, endotoxin sepsis. Anesthetic management decrease the use of drug that provide hypotension. Application of balanced anesthesia techniques, usually opioid based, also important. Aggressive treatment of hypotension is delayed if blood loss is ongoing. And a caution must be exercised when the fluids are administered to patient with the cardiac disease or with the increased intracranial pressures. You need to be cautious with the cardiac patients or with the increased intracranial pressure patients. Then trauma, triad of the death, if there is a trauma, the severe blood loss, what will happen, you know, uh, there is a severe blood loss that decreased the heart, uh, heart performance and then a low body temperature, hypothermia, decreased the coagulation and then coagulopathy increased lactic acid in blood, acidic blood that tolerance decreased the heart performance. So there are a lot of other complications when there is a blood loss. A lactic acid Hatfit Pharma presents its flagship brand, Hat Cure, the ultimate plasma expander to treat hypervolemic shock in small animals. It consists of 6% hydroxyethyl starch, 130 by 0.4, and 0.9% sodium chloride. For placing order, contact our sales team, WhatsApp at 98372-53817 or visit www.hatwit.com. Thank you. There is a blood loss, a lactic acidosis, and then it resulted in decreased heart performance, low body temperature, and a decreased coagulation and other problems. Crystalloid fluids are commonly given uh, 5 to 10 ml per kg per hour during anesthesia. Replacement type of fluid are used as their electrolyte control resemble that of plasma and they may be safely used at the higher infusion, lactate ranges and normal salon. These are all IV fluid uh, composition and choices. Uh, you know, if it's a 0.9% normal saline, osmolality 308, sodium 154 milliequivalent, uh, chloride 154. Uh, if it is a lactate ringle, osmolality 273, sodium 130, chloride 109, potassium 4, calcium 3 milliliter, lacto 28 milliliter. If it is a plasma light, you know, the osmolality 294, sodium 140 milliliter, chloride 98, uh, potassium 5 milliliter, magnesium 3 milliliter, ammonia 16 milliliter, acid 27 milliliter, and glucose 23 milliliter. Depends upon the need, you know, we need to use this. The ideal fluid of choice in veterinary practice is the lactate ringle. And then uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, uh, when there is uh, intracranial pressures, uh, uh, you know, they can go for uh, uh, you know, uh, higher, uh, you know, 0.9% normal sorry. And uh, there are blood loss, you can go for blood death. Uh, 
there are rbc requirement you can go for rbc there are occasion they need platelet you can go for platelet and the patient with the cardiac and renal problem you are not supposed to do the whole blood depends upon the need of the patient you can do the blood there. then uh, these are all some of the fluid uh, commercially available what are the uses what are the special concentration i would like to discuss and then if it is a dextrose 5% is come is isotonic when there is a fluid loss you can use dehydration you can use hypernatremia you can use use cautiously in renal and cardiac patient because volume overload will cause uh, discomfort to the animal and uh, yeah that's way and if you are using 0.9% sodium chloride use in case of shock hypernatremia blood transfusion resuscitation fluid challenges diabetic ketosis that you can use this will also can lead to overload use with caution in patient with the heart failure or edema if you are using lactate ringers used in case of dehydration burns uh, lower gi blood loss acute blood loss hypovolemia due to that patient even you can use in case of renal failure and uh, contain potassium don't use with the uh, uh, renal failure patient renal failure with hyperkalemia you have to cautiously use don't use with the liver disease it cannot metabolize the lactate hypotonic 0.5% sodium chloride uh it can be used in case as a water replacement diabetic ketosis gastric fluid loss from uh vomiting uh special can use with caution may cause cardiovascular collapse and increase in intracranial pressure don't use with liver disease trauma or fall hypertonic dextrose with 5% half normal saline and later in diabetic ketosis so use only when uh, blood sugar loss fall below 200 mg per deciliter hypertonic uh, solution it shows 5% uh, normal saline temporary treatment of shock if a plasma expander are not available used in case of addition crisis don't use in cardiac and renal patients hypertonic rate uh, 10%, 10% dextrose uh, used in case of water replacement conditions where uh, some nutrition with glucose is required monitor the sugar level these, these things are very important surgery cases use the balance right if ak risk or iv fluid volumes lactate ringer solution plasma light can be used sepsis balance electrolytes and lactate ringer uh, lactate ringer solutions traumatic brain injury you can use normal cell this was i told you 0.9% solution special cases evaluate individually diabetes and uh, diabetic ketosis renal dysfunction severe hyperkalemia abnormal sodium hyponatremia hypernatremia saline for hypovolemic hyperkalemia abnormal acid base severe acidosis or atrophosis saline for hypochloremic metabolic disease identify the conditions condition accordingly you have to select the fluid if it is hypoglycemia you can use glucose uh, if it is metabolic acid you can use bicarbonate like that depends upon the condition you have to select crystalloid versus colloid crystalloid and lactate ringers normal salt plasma light sodium chloride uh, 3% hypertonic saline 0.5% saline these are all crystalloid colloid you know is you come the whole blood plus uh, frozen uh, plasma packed red blood cell synthetic eta starch and wet starch and uh, many occasion if you have uh, getting the colloid become problem if the animal need uh, for example parvoviral disease having uh, vomiting uh, diarrhea with blood clot use eta starch are wet starch also available 5 to 10 ml every glow body weight don't use hemosilandal uh but they, 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 their molecular weight is very, very smaller but eta starch molecular weight is uh, you know 2 lakhs it can be in the blood vessel for longer time that, that's the way you know eta starch being used the shock dose of free 90 to 60 ml per kg per hour in dogs and cats respectively 10 ml per kg bolus may be given in hypertension patient and response assessed short lived response uh you know uh, less than 20% of infused fluid remain in vascular space one hour after administration colloid larger molecular weight substances are plasma expanders consider when albumin level less than 2 g per deciliter or total protein 4 4 g per deciliter when there is albumin level less than this you can consider colloid and then uh, natural you know, albumin plasma blood also can be used plasma extract human serum albumin dextran polygelin it has such these are all the plasma expanders so what commonly i use you know i use it has such especially in case of uh, parvoviral disease uh, many puppies we saved by using this it has such 
synthetic hydroxyethersol dexon gelatin axiclovin are available hydroxyethersol and dexon 70 are typically administered 4 to 5 ml per kg during anesthesia both expand the plasma volume by uh, one uh, more than 1.4 times the infused volumes so these are all like commercially available it's normally used in 6 percent ethyl such hydroxyethyl such i use it 10 ml every kilo body weight uh, body and dexon also volume the total is 20 ml per kg is usually considered the maximum dose of ethyl such hydroxyethyl such has a longer uh, duration of action than dexon 70 may action based coagulopathy particularly dexon you can use dexon oxyglobin is an another uh, plus one expression is a blood substitute that is significant non party effect in addition to its oxygen carrying ability it may be uh, used for blood pressure volume support in hypotensive patients Infusion rate must be particularly restricted in cat to prevent the volume overloads. We have a less experience using oxyglobin. Probably we have to try in the future. Then dopamine, a dopamine hydrochloride. Uh, this is an uh, inotrope. Two to ten microgram per kg per minute IV can be used. Here. The effect depends upon the dose rate. Low dose dopaminergic effect. Medium dose rate positive inotropic effect. High dose vasoconstrictions. So depends upon the dosing. It's having dopaminergic effect, positive inotropic effect. High dose only result to vasoconstriction. Heart rate increases with increasing increasing dose. Previously advocated the do the low dose for renal protection has not proved beneficial for this purpose. There are renal failure patients. They used uh, low dose of dopamine, and uh, but uh, that didn't give uh, that much of result. Dopamine. The next drug we are discussing about dopamine. The dose is 2 to 10 microgram per kg per minute. Positive inotrope, little effect on vascular smooth muscles. When there is hypotension, this is another epinephrine. 0.05 to 0.4 microgram per kg per minute IV. Positive inotrope, pronotrope, vasoconstrictor. This is the epinephrine commercially available. Non-epinephrine dose is 0.05 to 0.4 microgram per kg per minute. Primarily a vasoconstrictor, usually used in conjunction with an inotrope. Require careful monitoring of cardiac output. Norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. Uh, epidrine is another next drug. It's uh, also a result of vasoconstrict bracotomy, increased the cardiac performance. Uh, it's actually, you know, 5 to 15 minutes. It's uh, coming under the controlled drug. <coughs> Vasopression, vasoconstrict. Used in uh, cardiopulmonary arrest, <coughs> replace the epinephrine in some situation. <coughs> Dose of uh, vasopressin 0.1 to 0.8 unit per kg recommended dose and 0 0.04 uh, units per kg per minute is infusion dose. This is the vasopressin injections, uh, 20 units and 1 ml is available. Anesthetic management is also very important. Drug selection and dosage is very important. Opiate, etomidine, diazepam, ketamine are all drugs that are uh, frequently used in patients that are expected to experience hypertension. Well, over jealous use of diazepine and the ketamine that also result in hypertension. You need to be cautiously used. That is a message about the spine. Uh, these are all the drug there. Uh, Etomidate injections. This is the diazepam injection. You all know that. Ketamine, frequently used to drug. Summary untreated hypertension can lead to morbidity, mortality, and anesthetic small animal patients. Objective monitoring is the only way to reliable. Uh, uh, reliably detect hypotension. So, assessment uh, is very, very important. Blood pressure monitor are not always accurate. Anesthetic management, fluid therapy, ionotrope, vasopressure may all be used to treat hypertension. Whenever you get a case of hypertension, look at the primary problem. Accordingly, you have to select whether the fluid, whether the ionotrope, whether the vasopressure. Vasoconstriction alone may increase the blood pressure, but may result in decreased blood pressure. Clinical sign of hypertension, uh, you have a non septic and a septic syndrome. Non septic, you know, you will have tachycardia, bounding or weak pulses, fail mechanism, slow capillary pressure, mental dullness, weakness, hyperventilation, hypothermia, and the cold extremity, uh, less urine output uh, can be involved. Septic or systemic immune response, tachycardia will be there, mucosa injector, red color, rapid CRP will be there. And uh, pale mucous membrane. And then uh, injected mucous membrane. So usually, sepsis cases you will have a uh, injected mucous membrane like this, brick red. In case of uh, anemia, uh, 
uh, hypertension case, you will have a pale mucus protein. And majority, majority of the cases, you will have a prolonged recovery. Simple, easy test, better to perform in your day to day practice to identify hypertension cases. And just if you delayed a prolonged of capital in weekly time, at least the fluid on time, you can reverse the problem of hypertension. Uh, physical examination, clinical sign, tachycardia, sympathetic stimulation of heart rate, as well as a pale mucus movement, prolonged lethal time, weak peripheral pulse, cold uh, distal extremities, altered mentations, all reflecting peripheral vasoconstriction or impaired perfusions. This, you know, already we discussed. Measure of blood pressure, dog and cat hypotension should be considered when the mean arterial pressure is below 8 mm HCG. Systolic blood pressure less than 90 to 100 mm HCG also be considered to reflect hypotension. And direct measurements, the use of arterial catheter, typically dorsocadal or femoral, and the pressure transfusion is considered the gold standard for assessment of arterial blood pressure. Indirect method of blood pressure measurement, including Doppler ultrasonography, and also limited spigmometry. This you have seen in the previous video. Preliminary laboratory analysis might include factor cell volume, total protein, blood glucose, arterial venous blood gas analysis, blood smear examination, lactate measurement. With the eventual submission of complete blood cell code, chemistry profile, and coagulation profiles. And all the hypertension cases, all these laboratory parameters, very, very important to take care of the critically ill patients. Normal arterial blood pressure values in dogs and cats, systolic 110 to 190 mmHg, cat 120 to 170 mmHg, diastolic arterial 55 to 110 mmHg, cat 70 to 120 mmHg, mean arterial 80 to 130 mmHg, cat 60 to 130 mmHg. Treatment of fibrosin, fluid resuscitation is the often the core source of uh, resuscitative effect, especially if a reduction is preload is suspected. This include cause of absolute uh, or relative hemorrhage or obstruction or vasodilation. Hypovolemia typically not primarily cause of cardiac dysfunction. Positive aerotrope should be used in cases of documented through echocardiogram, highly suspected uh, myocardial and systolic dysfunction. All these aerotropes you have seen in the previous slide. In these cases, application of beta adrenaline agonist is indicated with the dopamine, generally the preferred agents. Drawback to use the positive aerotrope include increased myocardial oxygen demand and the potentially to cause arrhythmias. Vasopressor agent. Patient with an uh, inoperated vasodilatory process may benefit from administration of vasopressor agent. Sign consistent with the early hyperdynamic vasodilatation, bounding pulse, red beaker, shortened uh, capillary flow may be more obvious. However, once progress to the hypodynamic stage, it can be difficult to distinguish from other causes of hypertension. For this purpose, an um, Alpha-1 agonist or vasopressor may be used, although dopamine has long been considered the first line of vasopressor. Current human guidelines recommend use of marifepinephrine with the vasopressor added second if needed in septic patients. These are all varied drugs, epidrine doses, dopamine doses, dopamine doses, phenylephrine doses, marifepinephrine doses, and then a positive inotrope or vasoconstrictive effect. Administrations, uh, you know, methods. Given. When there is a hypotension, treat them with the crystalline plus dopamine, 5 to 10 microgram per kg. Even after this, if you do hypertension, go with the crystalline with the norephrodine, 0.1 to 2 microgram per, uh, per kg per minute. Even after this hypertension, go with the dopamine, 1 to 10 microgram per, uh, per kg per minute. Or Vasopressin 0.5 to 0.5 units per kg per minute or epidrin 0.05 to 0.3 uh, microgram per kg per minute. These are all the some of the standard charts. You can keep it in the critical care unit to decide the drug as and when you get a case of hypertension. So these are all nutshell information about the uh, hypertension in small level practice and its management. With this, I conclude. I thank Hatred Pharma for providing the great pharma, great, uh, great platform to meet the great audience. And uh, this critical care series uh, definitely, to, definitely useful to your practice. These are all the hands-on information we are sharing with you. With the available resources globally, we are sharing and giving it to you. Uh, make use of this. You keep this as a e-resource. Whenever you find the case, you play this. 
and then you can uh, get all the information whenever you need thank you very much for placing order contact our sales team whatsapp at 9837253817 or visit www.hatbit.com thank you